In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can be able to search and query Redis data inside of a Node Express server. So here you can see I have a repository called Node Redis Server, which you can be able to find the code repository inside of the video description. And here you can see we have a server.js, which create the Express application, and we have some routers and which listens to the server at the port 8080. And here you can see these are the packages that we have inside of our application. So here you can see we have installed the Redis and inside of the object mapping folder, we have a client.js, which in this case will create the connection. So here you can see we can be able to copy this configuration from the Redis cloud. You can see inside of the console, we have a public endpoint, which you can click on connect. And there is a Redis client, which you specify the language. In my case, it's going to be Node.js. So here you can see these are the password socket and the port that you can copy from to import it to the application. So once we have the connection, we're going to connect it. And then we're going to create a client using the connection. Then we're going to create a schema, which is what we're going to use to store inside of our Redis database. And then we pass the schema to the client to fetch this repository. And then we're going to use this person repository to create the index. And to create the index, what we're going to do is we're going to just run our server. And this will basically run this file entirely. So what we're going to do is we're going to say npm start which if we were to look at our package.json, it will basically start our server.js. And this will basically create our index. In this case, you can see we have a person index created. And then we can be able to add some data. So here you can see inside of the persons folder, I have multiple data. And these are the data for the person schema that we're going to insert. And here you can see I have a shell script called C data, which basically iterate all the person files that we have inside a persons folder, which basically runs a request to create those persons inside of our Redis. And if we were to look at the person route, this will basically take the request body and save it into the person repository and send it back to the response. So what we're going to do first is we're going to see some data. And since we're already inside of the persons folder, we're going to run the sh and we're going to see those data. And now if we were to refresh, you can see that those data have appeared inside of our Redis insights. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at how we can be able to query those data. And to do that, I have already wrote some sample code code inside of the search router.js. And here you can see we have a search router.js. Here we can be able to search and query data inside of our Redis. And we're using the person repository that we have already talked about. In this case, we can be able to use the dot search to search the data and dot return dot all, which basically returns all the results that we have. So here inside of the postman, if I were to do persons slash all, and you can see that we have all the outputs return. And of course, we can also be able to add pagination to our search. So here you can see we can be able to use the return page to offset certain amount of items, and we can be able to display certain amount of items. So for example, let's say we're on page two and we want to display two items. So in this case, we want to offset two items since the page one will basically display two items and page two will basically start at the third item that we have. So we're offsetting two items and we're going to count, which basically means that we're going to display only two items. So what we're going to do is we're going to say person slash all, and then we're going to specify that we want to offset two items and then we're going to display only two items from there. So if we were to search, you can see that we have two items. And if we were to go back to our Redis cache, you can see that the third item that we have is this one. And then the fourth item is David. So if we were to go back to the postman, you can see that David is, is the last item that we have on our page. Now let's get to the search part. So we can be able to run a query by using the where function. In this case, we're a search by the last name property. And we wanna make sure that it equals to the last name from the request parameter. So let's copy this and try to run our query. So in this case, we're going to say persons slash by last name in this case we're going to search by homes and if we were to provide this we're only looking to see one output result in this case we have this data right here and if we were to search for another one for example this one right here then we're going to and if we were to search this you can see that we have another result showing for the last name which equal to page so that's for string and then we can also be able to work with numbers so you can see that if we're selecting the age we're looking to find all the records that have age is equal to or greater than 21 so we're going to return all of those results 
and you can see we have all those records that have age greater than 21. And of course, we can also be able to do greater than greater than 60 or greater than 70. And if I were to get a result, you can see I have one record, two records. So I have two records that have a age that's greater than 70. And I can also be able to do less than. So I want to do all the records that are less than 70. So if I want to do a search, you can see we have 63, 67, 41 and so on and so forth. And then we can also be able to work with Boolean. So in this case, either we can be able to do dot false or we can be able to do dot true. So that will also work to select all the records where this property is true, or we can do this dot false, which basically select this prop to select all the records where this property is false. And if we were to run this, you can see we have all the records where the verified is false, so none verified. And then we also have a couple more left. So here you can see we can also be able to join multiple queries together. So for example, we want to see if verify is true, and then we can join another query by using the end. In this case, we're looking for age that are greater than or equal to 21. And last name is equal to last name, which is what we have inside of the query param. So let's give that a search. And we're looking for a last name that is equal to live green. And in this case, this should not return the result because the verified is false. So let's give that a try. And you can see we have empty. So I'm just going to change this manually inside of the database true. And if we were to run this request again, you can see that we have this result coming up. In this case, it is it is above 21 and the last name is equal to this as well as the verify is true. So you can see that we can be able to join multiple queries using the end function. Then we can also be able to do full text search. And here you can see because for the personal statement, if we look at these person, this is text. So we can be able to use the match function to see if the query parameter text, it matches with this. So it doesn't have to be exact match. So for example, let's say if the data has, there are days that I can walk around. So let's say if the search uh, text in this case is just days or days that, then we can be able to see if the personal statement match this text and return all those results. So let's give that a try. So for example, if we were to query this and try to put this as the parameter and the text, in this case, we're going to say um, there are days that I can walk around. And if we were to run this query, you can see that we have Chris display as result with the personal statement that match the text that we have inside of the search parameter. And lastly, we can also be able to search by location, so by radius. And you can see here, we can be able to provide the longitude and latitude. So you can see here inside of our database, like here, we have our location, which in this case, we have the longitude and a latitude. Okay, and then we can be able to search that by providing the is in radius. In this case, we have a circle and then we provide the longitude and latitude, which is the middle point of the circle. We're going to provide the radius in miles to return all the results that match this case. So here you can see I have provide the longitude and latitude and the radius is 20. And if we were to run this query, you can see that we have a data that's showing that is within this radius.